Hey, Bobby here with Coder Foundry. It's the middle of the summer here in 2025. And that means we're halfway through the release schedule for .NET 10. And Microsoft is doing a lot of things that are really kind of cool changes they're making to the platform. And one of those changes is minimal APIs. Now, one of the most requested features for minimal APIs is model validation. And it allows you to put data annotations on your model, and then when you post it, it'll validate those or use those rules as validation for the data coming in. And that's one of the reasons a lot of people say they haven't adopted mental APIs is because of this feature. Well, now it's coming to us in .NET 10, and if you run um, .NET 10 in preview with Visual Studio Preview or the latest version of VS Code, you can play with it. Let me show you um, what it can do, and then we'll dive into the code and show you how we can write them. All right, so I've got this test harness here, and this uh, repo that I'm going to give you is included in the link below, and you can get this complete code base to come and look at it and play with it however you want. But I've got a run here of the post for orders. I just made something up here. And I'm gonna show you kind of what can go wrong here and like what it saw. So I've got an order here. Um, I left the, the name blank, and I've got a date in here. And watch this when I send it. You can see it's validating some errors and says, hey, the customer name is required, so you can put the customer name in here and repost it. And then um, that'll go away, but we still have these other areas. There's a delivery date must be on a business day. Now, that's kind of interesting. I'll show you how we'll do that in a second. And so I push that on a business day. And now it says, hey, my order can't exceed $10,000. So we could just put this back to one and boom, we get a post. And so we're validating all of these fields here. We're doing a cross field validation. We got some custom attributes and the built-in data annotations. I'll show you how we do it. Before we get there, let me tell you about the complete Blazor course here at Coder Foundry. If you go to learn.coderfoundry.com, you're trying to learn Blazor for the first time, or you're just trying to transition to a new role, this course is for you. It's for aspiring full stack developers, mid-level career changes, whatever you're at. And it's got a lot of features in here. And we're going to build a lot of apps. It's a lot of fun. It's about 52 hours of content, 156 lessons. And when you're done with that one, you can actually come down here and also take our bug tracker course, which we consider our capstone, which is another 200 hour course that builds the world famous bug tracker, really complete enterprise project. So go to learn.coderfoundry.com and check us out. And we have a course for you. And let's jump into the code here and see what we can do. All right. So let me close this down here. And this is the code that we're going to talk about. So the first thing I want to show you is how do we opt into this? Because one of the beautiful things about mental APIs is that it's going to be an opt-in framework. Whereas controllers, you took everything and everything you need could sometimes reduce performance. And mental APIs meant to be minimal. The key word is you opt into the things you need. And it's just like validation. So in the program CS here, we can run this one line of code here inside of our program CS and we can say add validation. Now at the time of writing here, the time of recording here, you also need to add, modify your project and add these interceptor namespaces. And I've got the product, come here and let's show you here what that looks like. And that's just right here in this property group. You put this line in here. Now, if you forget to do this, it'll throw an error and give you the exact line. You come back here and you add it. But if you use an our, our GitHub repo, it's already pre-configured, already ready to go. Gives you the test harness and already set up. Now, you do need um, .NET 10 Preview 4 or higher. And also, I'm running Visual Studio Preview, which you'll need to run. Or you can do this with VS Code if you have the newest version. But let's look at this order DTO here and see the types of things we can do once you have this set up. Now, once it's set up here, to make this required, we can simply use these required annotations here, and I'll just do it for all of them. And these annotations will now validate this model. When we post, uh, make a post to this and we send in one of these, it's gonna validate that each of these has a value, so it makes it required. The other thing that it can do as well is there's a lot of other built-in validations that are also pretty cool. All right, so we can also change the display name here so that anytime we have a message, we can use the display name instead of the, of the model names here, which are usually in some kind of Pascal case, and that's really not user-friendly per se. So we could also validate this to say something like display, 
name and then just put the name that you want to show. It's a customer, customer name. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this for anyone that has two names kind of in their name. So like unit price could be unit space price. Quantity is good like that. And then delivery date will be fine. So now we have, we're checking to see if it's required. It must the, the user must send us a value to our endpoint. And then if we have any error messages, we can now use this name instead of this name. And that's pretty cool. Well, what else can you do with this? Well, there's a lot of annotations. And actually in the readme here, I've got a link to the official documentation. I advise you to read through all of that because all of those are valid here. I just want to show you a couple others to show you how powerful this is. We can have a range validation here. And we can say that unit price must be one cent or higher, which means it must not be zero. It must be greater than zero. We could also do the same kind of thing for... Um, quantity here and we'll say it must be at least one and so that's pretty interesting so these are range values okay and there's a lot of other built-in ones here but for delivery date the one I showed you is like business day what do you do with that I mean like is that built in no we can write custom attributes inside this class as well so and it supports that which is kind of super powerful I believe um, so let's write a custom attribute and we'll say attribute usage. Usage. There we go. And we'll say attribute targets. And we're going to target the property. And then we'll say allow multiple equals false for this one. Okay, so you can have multiple values as well for these. But this one, and then in here we write our validator and um, I'm just gonna cut the paste the code in here easy to do because it's really in about writing um, validators to show you that you can do this so you can see here I've got this business day attribute here validation attribute I've got my message here that's default message and then it just checks here right here the value that's coming in say hey if that's a daytime then check to see if it's a, if it's not Saturday or Sunday, else return true. Um, so this means that um, if it's null coming here, you're going to let required handle that, which we think that's the way to do it. And then once you have that built here, you can just simply come here to the delivery date and business day. Boom. Just like that. And now that's marked up. That's kind of cool. Well, the other thing that you can do is you can do cross field validation or class level validations. And to do that, it's pretty easy. We just implement an interface here. And um, I'm going to say implement the interface, come down here. And from here, we can now write some code here. And I've got some code that we can just use here. I'll show you how this works. Pretty easy. And you write whatever C sharp code you want in here. And so, but you have access to any of the fields or properties inside the class itself. So all I'm doing here is checking to see if it's greater than 10,000. If it's, if it is, then throw this message here and I'm going to throw a message to each one of those. Now what's cool about this cross field and this custom attribute, it is, it's already included in the entire life cycle here of how validations get pushed out. Um, and these also work on things like forms or whatever, but it works also inside our post here. So we'll post it back one more time to show you kind of how it works. And so I've got a post here. We'll test the request and all of this is pre-built for you. So we can check this, the same kind of thing we did before. Let's add in a date here. And we post it and you'll see it'll generate some errors here. Let's say that um, customer name is required and we'll put a name in here. And then we'll change this to, to two and that to 10,000. So it can generate an error there. So we'll push it. And now we have delivery date must be on a business day. We know that's 18 at the time of writing here. And boom, and then we say, oh, it still can't be over 10,000. Okay, so we'll just crank this back to one. 
and now our model is validated and it goes through and pushes it through and that's kind of cool so in fact if you went and looked at the git here you can just scroll down here at the bottom and you can see here i've got this custom one that we just pushed in there so you can see that the post actually worked and it validated and now we have all of our data submitted correctly to it all right so that is model validation and what does this mean to you this means that minimal apis are ready for the enterprise they already were kind of ready you could write your own validators but this is another feature microsoft is adding to make this even more useful it is definitely a skill that you're going to want to pick up and know how to do as you go forward and if you're already writing minimal apis this is a welcome change and Microsoft is going to roll it out with .NET 10 later in the year. Well, I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding.